The Tang Dynasty Tour Chapter 1 The World Section 43 Lei Feng and the Bull Demon King Very good, Li Cheng Qian was completely at a loss when he was robbed for the first time, just staring with his eyes wide open, and making strange noises to protect his food in his mouth. Yunya had already developed a solid skill of snatching food in school. He gently stroked Li Chengqin's buttocks, and the grapes that Li Chengqian was holding in his arms fell into Yunya's hands. The royal guards held the handles of their swords, not knowing whether to execute this audacious thief on the spot. In the chaos, Yunya left the bedchamber with a large bunch of grapes in his hand amidst the horrified gaze of the eunuch and was carried away in a panic. No one was punished, and no one took back the stolen goods. Li Chengqian was used to this kind of game. He had robbed Yunyi's food more than once or twice. He could only lie on the bed and beat his chest and swear that he would avenge the shame of being robbed of grapes. Yunyi's simplified design of the unicycle was mass-produced. This kind of transportation tool that can be operated by one person amazed Niu Jinda. The unicycle can travel on the road where people can walk. The old ox with great strength allowed people to load 500 caddies of grain on the unicycle, hang up the sails, and gallop back and forth on the school ground, like a child getting a new toy. Yunyi did not make major changes. This transportation tool from the Shu area during the Three Kingdoms period has evolved quite well. Yunyi only added an iron axle, made the wooden wheels into light wheels with spokes, and added an adjustable sail to use the wind. It is light and labor-saving. Even if the other soldiers do not have the perverted strength of the old ox, it is still no problem to carry two stones of grain. Chen Yejin prepared early to turn the entire Zhou Wuvai into a large grain transportation team. In addition to the necessary guards, he planned to take away 100,000 stones of grain at a time when the army returned to the capital. Yunyi unknowingly had a lot of property. Because of his appearance at the commendation meeting of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the great clans of Lanzhou paid much attention to this marquee of wood. The night light cups from Jiquan were sent in pairs, which made the three-flowered brother feel so painful. Yunyi looked at the four black and round cups with three flats and four rounds and wanted to throw them into the trash. In later generations, a pair of 30 yuan is much more delicate than this. You can see the figure through the wall of the cup. You can bargain for 20 yuan and it is still a friendship price. You just serve the meat dishes directly, and I don't dislike the real gold and silver. The expressionless faces made these local tyrants feel uneasy. The appetite of the marquee from the capital is unusual, and the 500 guan cup is not visible. So, the Persian silver pots are sent in sets, and the Hishan jade is sent in boxes. After receiving two agate stones the size of a human head, the Marquis finally smiled, which made the people of Lanja feel relieved. He hummed the tune of making a fortune and making a fortune back to the camp but found that Li Cheng Qian, Cheng Kumo, Zhang Sun Chong, and Li Huai were dividing the spoils, and he was furious. The four wolves were startled and fled in a panic. I don't know which immoral ghost accidentally touched Yunyi's ass with his knee. In his screams, the robbers returned with the full load, leaving only the heartbroken Yunyi to shed tears secretly. The army pulled out and returned to the capital. The officials of Lanja Road came to see them off. After a drink of farewell wine, 
Neo Jinda, dressed in linen and a single shirt, pushed the unicycle, and shouted, Let's go. Five hundred fully armed cavalrymen rumbled in front, Chang Kumo and Li Huiren rode side by side to suppress the rear and took the lead to return to the capital. Yun Yi led the logistics camp and drove hundreds of carriages and ox carts loaded with food and supplies. Niu Jinda left his status as a marquee and followed closely with 5,000 unicycles. Lao Cheng and the prince were in the rear camp, escorting the captured trophies and ready to meet Niu Jinda's unicycle team at any time. If necessary, they could take turns pushing the cart. 50 miles is the itinerary set by the army before setting off. From sunrise to noon, take a break for an hour, and then march until the destination. Because it is by car, the logistics camp will be faster. Prepare meals and hot water at the camp and wait for the arrival of Niu Jinda's convoy. Zhou Yuvai and under Yun Yi's suggestion, to save time for eating. Cook together, a hundred or ten large pots with a diameter of one meter are lined up in a row, a spoonful of meat and vegetables, a spoonful of meat soup, and a large dry cake, which is the whole dinner for the soldiers. Yun Yi limped over to Niu Jinda, who was eating with his head down, holding a wine gourd in his hand. He filled a bamboo cup with spirits and offered it to the old man with both hands. The old man drained it in one gulp. Yun Yi knew that the old man loved wine, so he filled another cup and said, Uncle Niu, have another drink to relieve your fatigue. The old man didn't even look up and said gently, military regulations forbid it. A cup of wine every night is already against the rules. How can I, as a military judge, break the law myself do the other brothers have any? The old man was still as serious as ever, which was probably why he had punished countless soldiers for violating the rules but no one held a grudge against him. Everyone has a bowl. This cup is for the nephew. Please do me the honor. The old man didn't say anything. He tilted his head back and poured another large cup down his throat. He handed the cup back to Yun Yi, waved at him, and turned to inspect the camp. 2,300 miles. This was the distance from Lanzhou to Chang'an in the Tang Dynasty. Marching 50 miles a day would take a whole month and a half. Less than three days after leaving Lanzhou, they plunged into the vast mountains. The roads were rough and winding. The front team had already reached the top of the mountain, while the rear team was still at the foot of the mountain. It was barely possible for a carriage to pass through. In the Tang Dynasty, this was already a guarantee of convenient transportation. In the past, when Yun Yi read about the Tang Dynasty losing the western region in history, he was filled with disappointment and sadness that the Tang Dynasty's control had weakened. Now he knew what a price Chang'an had to pay to control the distant western regions. The stubborn Tang people opened up the territory generation after generation, and they died generously. It is a pity that the bones by the Wooding River are still the people in the dreams of the boudoir. Yun Yi disagreed with the poet's view. He only saw the corpses by the Wooding River but did not see the prosperity of the Silk Road. Without a strong army to guard it, how could there be a prosperous Tang dynasty the herders outside the domain were barbaric, and had no sense of right and wrong, no sense of propriety, righteousness, integrity, and shame. The natural law of the survival of the fittest had given them a strong physique but had not given them the instinct to create and labor. 
they robbed food from the sky, the earth, and their neighbors. If necessary, they didn't mind robbing their parents of food. They ate everything, including cannibalism. As long as their genes could be passed on, their fists and scimitars were the foundation of their interests. The veins on the old man's neck bulged. The tall sack on the wheelbarrow was as heavy as a mountain. He was old after all. There was too much food on the wheelbarrow and it was too heavy. He had overestimated his ability. The mighty general who had sworn that no one would starve to death again was soaked in sweat. Yunyi silently pulled up the rope in front of the wheelbarrow and put it on his shoulder, trudging up the mountain step by step. Who would have thought that a duke would be pushing a cart and a marquis would be pulling a cart? Yunyi asked the old man, panting. What a fart of a duke and a marquis. There are so many dukes and marquises in the world. I haven't seen anyone grow an extra bird. Don't they still have to eat, drink, shit, and sleep? People can't let themselves be too comfortable. If their bodies are comfortable, their hearts will become numb. What's the difference between this and a salted fish I've rebelled in my life, killed people, and slept with countless women? So what if it weren't for that thought, I don't know what I would have become. His Majesty has shown great kindness to me, so I have sold my life to him. In my early years, my parents and siblings starved to death. I hated myself for not dying. My elder brother handed me the last piece of bran dumpling. I swallowed it without thinking. I lived, but my elder brother died. What he gave me was not a bran dumpling, but his life. My life is not only my own but also the lives of my thirteen family members. How can I not live uprightly when I die one day and meet my elder brother in the underworld, I can tell him that I have lived a wonderful life, a free life, and an upright life. I have not wasted the life you gave me, not even for a single day. Oh my God, the old cow has become a saint. Yunye swore that he saw a golden light flashing on the old cow. The golden light hurt his eyes and his heart shrank. Yunye used to hear about saints like Lei Feng, and he always felt that they were fake. Now it seemed that they were not fake, but that he lived a fake life. The villain under the leather robe was talking about people like him. Note. One the old cow is old new. Two Lei Feng was a model PLA soldier.